Alright, so we're gonna start this final match. What's going on, guys? It's Co-Shade. How you doing? We got Puddin here. What's going yo. on, Puddin? Yo, yo. You excited for this championship match? It has been a long ride, and I am excited to see what happens here. Yeah. This is the top of the top, cream of the crop sort of situation going on here. So, um, Jack Smack, who's playing the Priestess in the bottom right, uh, returning champion from the ADMW, uh, looking to get that ADMW League 2 champion title. Uh, Jason, always been a solid player. And the top left playing the Warlord. Uh, specifically the Orc Warlord. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you have a preference to your favorite Warlord? I I like the Orc Warlord better yeah. on average. Um, I tend to find that the Anvil Throne Warlord is largely a solo mage. And I haven't really seen him effective in other ways. But it's really easy to screw the solo mage up. Yep. Like If somebody brings the right cards, you're just done. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I agree with you on a lot of that, actually, yeah. So, you know, eh, I, I can totally see that um, it's not, like, it doesn't have to be that way, right? I mean, there's there's reasons to take the Anvil Thorn Warlord and do normal Warlord things with the Anvil Thorn Warlord. I just, I tend to enjoy the Blood Wave better. I can see that. Yeah, I mean, the... Um... <clears throat> I, I find that the Blood Wave, like, okay, I guess if you're going to use the Anvil Throne, you're most likely going to see a lot of different equipment. And it's kind yep. of rare not to. So if you are expecting equipment, that's usually a significant part of their mana is going towards that. So, like, you kind right. of can predict more, I think, coming from the Anvil, what what you're going to see. Um, that being said, Jack Smack, bringing out Cassiel. Um, that's that's interesting. I would have expected Jack Smack to play Dorseus first. Yeah, Dorseus is definitely one of those contenders where just kind of every mage we've been seeing cast it. Um, at least I've seen it in my games, uh, where people are just casting it just because they're like, it's just a good card. Just bring it around. Yeah. Well, and you can just start the whole ritual problem with, mm -hmm. um, yep. With Dorsius. Now, it could be that he was expecting an aggressive warlord from Sir Jason because, you know, Sir Jason's usually an aggressive player. And we do see the double move from the warlord here. Right. That's a really interesting choice. Um, just because it means he's probably going to cast something big. I mean, Jason does say he uh, wanted to counterplay Nabmasters. And, oh, he's talking about a different match. But maybe he's planning on casting some sort of a Kiro's Hammer to counter some sort of weird temple build that's going on. Um, or maybe he's just double moving to start the Battleforge process. Um, did see that one game that he played where he played, I think, three Battleforges or something like that? Or no. Maybe that was his opponent. Two Forges, was Two, two flowers. Forges. That's right. Two Forges, Two Flowers. Yeah. Uh, that's right. There was like a total of four on the field at some point. It was crazy. But um, if you one-shot my Forge, I concede. Wow. <laughs> so... Jack Smack playing the Battle Forge. That's not unexpected uh, out of Jack yeah, Smack. There's, there it is. Battle Forge and the Ballista. Ballista going down. Uh, solid card. Jack Smack saying if you one shot it, I concede. Which, you know, he'd need, what, a plus two on his roll from the yeah. averages? That's actually not yeah. unreasonable. Right. I think they're just playing around. Obviously. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Who knows? Uh, so. Looking at Jack Smack's setup, he basically has a lot of options for casting. Um, him being a 10-channel mage starting uh, means that, you know, he's, he might have more experience with how the Priestess sort of can function within that. But most likely we're going to see equipment. Uh, whether or not it's cheap equipment or expensive remains to be seen. But with Cassiel down, um, I typically think, uh, I mean, either protection spells or things like... Um, uh, consecrated ground and stuff like that, um, but it, but you know there's just a ton of options and Castile is just a super good familiar for everything. Blur isn't a protection spell, right? It's just an illusion spell. I, yeah, I don't believe it's protection. Um, but uh, now, you know, re reinforce is legal in this uh, tournament. Yes, yes it is. And I do want to point out that uh, Castile combos really nicely with the Priestess. 
Uh, just because if you cast those uh, enchantments, that when it gets revealed, the priestess gets her uh, her life one divine reward, which is always nice. That's true. That that is something that is often overlooked with the priestess, but people who play priestess all the time um, count on it to give yeah. them staying power. You know. Yeah, which that life plus one, man, it is not talked about enough. Like you know, you get your priestess up to forty, forty plus life. Uh, which isn't that yeah. hard with Academy. Uh, you can do right. some crazy tanking. <clears throat> Looks like they're going to be planning. I don't know if we want to skip this, but yeah, that ballista is probably... No, I wouldn't I wouldn't do... I don't think it events anything okay. other than the start of the turn. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Uh, so, let me ask you a question. With this ballista, what would you hit? Um, probably the Forge. Forge. Yeah, I mean, at this point, unless you're gonna run up and rock Cassio, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think it's worth shooting Cassio. And clearly, the Forge is there because he's planning to spend not his own actions on equipment. Yeah. So if you're planning to go hyper aggressive and you don't want him to have armor on, then I think hitting the Forge is the right move. Mm -hmm. And I do want to point out that this Battle Forge is kind of in a uh, defensive position. Um, so, I mean, basically, in a lot of ways, the Priestess Mage is kind of restricted to where she can move to, like, not even half the battlefield, just because it's, like, one of those... Oh, I don't have an image for Hurl Meteorite. That's interesting. Uh, well, this is a Hurl Meteorite <laughs> going down. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got some image problems there. Yeah, no kidding, but uh, we all know what this does. It's a range 3 hyper-aggression immediately going for the Priestess. Holy cow, man! By the way, I'm wow. covering up the uh, the time, so you guys have no idea how long this match lasts. Uh, but 10 attack dice getting rolled, and of that, 7 he's damage going too. through. Nice. Yeah, Hawkeye does 7 damage him. on the Priestess. Does that mean he's going to he's gonna ballista the Priestess? That's... He, he wow. is. He's going straight for the throat. <laughs> and wow. uh, 5 dice getting rolled, 5 getting uh, through. About average there. Uh, so... This is actually really, really tough uh, for Jason, only only because we have a priestess. Healing is right. so in school. That that would be extremely surprising. That's an extremely surprising tactic. I am, yeah, I'm totally surprised as well. So, um, holy cow. This is kind of one of those, like, do or die kind of situations for Jason. He can either get the damage or not. And a mana load is coming out. I guess he really didn't have much, much prepped right now. So he's like, I'll go for the longer term play. And we do see a ritual go down as well. Interesting choice. Um, choosing to get more mana. Getting damage on Cassiel. Huh. So I wonder if he wants to cast like Knight of Westlocks. And the remove curse going down. So he's he's using Cassiel as a mana battery. Very cool. Uh, basically, Cassiel casts this as a full action. Specifically, it says gain two mana. Um, the caster doesn't. It's the mage that says uh, that gains that right. sort of mana. Mage gains the mana. So he just gained an additional. What was it? Uh, three. So five mana he gained, and he's got that mana lotus down. Uh, he can do pretty much anything he wants. Next round. Well, is it going to be enough though? It's a question. Yeah. Twenty-four mana looks like dragon territory to me. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Especially with a you know a cleric already out, a um, little tough when you don't have a temple. But maybe he had one, and this is just his. I need to get safe before I could cast this. Uh, wow. So what are you thinking? As who? As Jack. That's a lot. I just I think that's a lot of economy. You got a ballista in your face and a warlord hurling meteors like. <laughs> Right. You need some damage. You need to take that ballista out. You need to get some some damaging creatures out there. You know, something. Gotta do something. Yeah, and that's kind of the tough part, is he has to use his full action. I almost wonder if it would have been better not to ritual and moved one just so he could cast a creature that's closer next round. Um, but I don't know. Maybe that would have been a bad choice. Um, the The big thing is Usually when you're on the defensive in this sort of rush situation, 
you want something out that's going to be dealing damage more than like a longer term dealing damage like a creature out already um just so then when you're healing up that heal is allowing you to sort of say all right you're taking five to six damage per round and i'm netting maybe one or two or healing a little bit of damage so like as time right. goes by they run out of those attack spells but your creature knight of westlock let's just say is dealing five dice consistently and uh that's one of those things that uh, i would like to see out of jack smack here but um you're right i mean these this mana battery maybe he just thought these are what the cards i have planned it's not really going to hurt my long game and i can't change these planned cards i might as well cast them yeah, I mean it makes sense. Uh, the meteor, though, that that yeah. was a surprise. That was that, a surprise. Yes, that might give you pause to really think about what you're doing this turn. I mean, when I will point out that when you see a double move ballista, you probably want to start getting armor of some sort, just because you never know. Hmm. Well, I was noting this last uh, the game with uh, Shoe Puff and, um, oh my gosh, Snapmaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they the piercing makes it so that you don't think armor is going to do anything right ah. like it's a psychological effect yes so if you're if there's a blist out there you need more than three armor in order to for your armor to do anything and that just feels like wasted actions but what it's the ballista is the only thing that has piercing, so armor is useful <laughs> against everything else. Right? Absolutely. So you know you can. I think you can get psyched out into thinking armor is not worth it. I mean, obviously, seeing what he just did, like, would have been really nice for maybe a divine protection out of Cassiel and a main body armor out of the Battleforge, just because those were actually options he could have done. Um, that being said, I mean, he's only. I mean, he's at twelve damage. That's actually quite a bit. So. <laughs> That's that's a little dangerous. It is. So we need some. Well, there's the armor coming out. The interesting right. one armor he chooses. Well, he probably has a more sustained plan. Mm. I mean, you're, with the battle forge, you're going to use the cheaper stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Ah, okay. Hand of Imshala. very good spell. I wait with it. Okay. So Hand of Imshala is well, one of those cards. Well, can't hit it right now. Yeah, so yeah. you're fine. Maybe he just wanted to use it immediately. And there is the Deathlock. And we have a full-blown... It's definitely a rush right now. Uh, there is oh, no wow. sorts of economy happening. He is just going, you wow. know what? Let's do this right now. I love it. This is a great play out of him. Uh, that is a little crazy in my mind. I mean, Dorseus is in school for Jack Smack. That wouldn't be completely crazy to see. Um, I guess the reason why Jack Smack wanted to hold it is because he couldn't use that hand of Bim. And so he's choosing not to play it now because Deathlock came out, which, I don't know, man, that armor might actually be useful here. Yeah, the armor would mitigate some of the damage, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Seems a little crazy. Seems a little crazy. All right. Jack Smack's Priestess goes. Here comes the Dorseus. And uh, Dorseus, you know, heals two and bypasses the finite life. Uh, so that's actually a really important card. Um, it Now we can sort of see things like Cassio cast a... Um, oh my gosh, Fireball. The Fireball, what? He's casting a fireball, and he rolls six damage, uh, but he gets two burns, five of that going through because of the armor. And right, I right. I do want to note, he has ten mana, Jack Smack. I'm curious to see if he's going to use it right now. At ten mana, if he did cast the uh, the Hand of Bim, he would have taken one less damage there. Just saying. Oh, well, he can use his action to pay two mana to remove mm. burns. Oh, that's, that's true as well, yeah. He just removes one burn. Yep, there he goes. That's that's probably a wiser choice, actually. Uh, although, I don't know why you would expect another f a fireball coming at you. Well, I mean, pretty clearly, clearly Sir Jason is just going to lob the big stuff, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, it just seems like that's his plan. Yeah, fireball being that spell that is the longer, quote-unquote, game 
kind of attack spell. Just because burns statistically can deal damage more over time um, than like other, um, you know, attack spells. It's just like it's just up to chance at that point. Should have let you heal one for five mana and summon it. Oh my god. Because he wanted to waste the mana. That's funny. So, Cassio can use the uh, Martyr's Retribution, which lets her transfer damage to uh, to herself. Oh, that's true. So, that, do it. that is an option. Um, we'll have to wait and see if that's going to be something that's important. But, you know, Jack Smack's looking at 18 damage now. 16 with Cass uh, with um, Dorsius. And let's see. He does take a damage from the burn as well. Okay. Okay. So he's at half light of damage. That's crazy, man. Yeah, this uh, seems to be going very quickly. Let's just see how Jack Smack reacts to this. Because, man, that's another Ballista shot this round, right? Mm-hmm. Plus whatever 10 mana is going to buy you for attack spells, which two rocks, something like that. Yep, two rocks would work. He might um, choose to Akiro or Gloves, just because he's been rolling a little subpar in terms of damage. Uh, or he's just going to go for it. I mean, honestly. Yeah, like, I have no idea what's in his book, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> And I will say that um, coming from someone that's played Priest a lot, uh, as a Holy Mage, it's actually extremely difficult to take out this Deathlock and not just put yourself completely out there, especially with this Battleforge being way back here. You kind yeah. of are limited in options and how to take this uh, Deathlock out. So in terms of like what Jack Smack's thinking, it's probably not, how can I kill this Deathlock? Um and then survive, because that's just probably not going to happen, to be honest. Uh, then again, I mean, he could get two armor out of this Battle Forge and get Aegis 1, and maybe that would buy him enough healing. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. That That's interesting. I mean, and with Dorseus in the field, that would give you a little bit more surviving power. Um, as Jason, I mean, I think it's time that he's just not going to kill Dorsius. I think he's just like, this is all or nothing. I have to kill you right now. So if he spends his attack spells on Dorsius, I think that's probably a mistake. Yeah, no, I think he's going straight for the mage. Yeah. And this is where Jack Smack is going to have to load up on armor and defense mm. and just try and weather the attack spells. Vet um, belts, at least two armor. Um, a, a wall of... Four. A couple of walls of fog would really help here. Ooh, yeah, that would be actually really nice. We saw that in one of the uh, group stage matches mm -hmm. where wall of fog just kept a ballista from doing anything. <laughs> you gotta love that, man. It's it's really interesting watching wall of fog, fog sort of become... I'm sorry. I don't know if this is like, zoomed in enough for everyone. So it's really interesting uh, seeing how wall of fog kind of... Um, has developed over time because like it used to be considered that spell that like you know why would you ever use this but then people started saying well it's you know it blocks line of sight for less mana and now you just see it everywhere so it's it's actually pretty cool um i i guess because you know ever since paladin we've just seen a lot of ballista mages sort of uh crop up more that sort of thing yeah ballistas well and then um yeah Seems good. And, you know, there, I think the uh, Ritual of Gallic has made people more inclined to turtle and want people yeah. to not mess with them. Right? So. Yeah, I agree with that. Ritual's probably been one of the most used spells I've seen lately. Just every mage. I've been seeing some sort of build with it. Mana Lotus is going to go next round, but Jack Smack thinking really hard about this one, mm -hmm. which totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting because in previous tournaments we've seen Jack Smack sort of be on this edge of like, is he having the advantage or not? In especially like championship matches, I think I remember one with Keegan that he played, uh, where it was like, there's no way he's gonna win with this, and he like barely held on, then won with it. It was insane to watch. So yeah. it, it, this sort of match, I I want to say he's just behind right now, but um, I don't know. Maybe he can pull something out. Yeah, half health with a burn on you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, and a death lock out, right? And the death lock, <laughs> I mean, ballista, yeah. looking at you in the face. No, might might be tricky. That's all mm -hmm. I'm saying. I it agree might with that. be a little tricky. <laughs> Absolutely agree with that. I'm going to put it up to 1.5 and just let him sort of plan faster. I could put it up to two, I guess, if we wanted. Plan faster, fools. Yeah, right? <laughs> Plan faster. <laughs> I, he's stressing right now. You can totally tell. Yeah, no, it, it, this is a tough situation because clearly he was not expecting this. He was expecting to get a, at least a couple of turns to, to get some stuff ready, I think. But I, I think Sir Jason has ascertained the situation well here because... In a long game, the priestess is going to win out, I think. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I do and... also want to point out that I think Jason planned these exact turns because he's at exactly 10 mana. And I do want to point out that in this tournament, he's at channel 10 instead of 9. So I'm right. almost wondering if he's like, this is exactly how I want to run this um, because now I can take Ballista and I can get things like a Fireball uh, and a meteorite in this turn in order. And like he's sort of leading the opponent to be like, yeah, meteorite, you're going to want to start healing, deathlock, then you're going to want to start doing other things, fireball, now you have to deal with burns, and the whole time the bliss is sort of out there. So this is like um, just a really good example of how a rush build sort of like plans out each and every single action and mana to, um, to, to be as efficient as possible. And I, I'm really impressed with watching this build. Uh, for how someone took a warlord that got changed to ten mit channel instead of nine, and uh, planned it out with how warlord only spells work, I'm really impressed right. with it. And right, of course, right. you see a lot of his warlocky self come out as well. We all know how Jason loves warlocks. Yeah, he's a he's an Arachian crown warlock guy. <laughs> Definitely. Jack Smack, I haven't prepared or. Er for this book oh my it's the championship match man yeah maybe he wasn't quite ready to, to do this yet I don't know Jason points that out I'm putting this up to two man <laughs> <laughs> like He doesn't have... Oh, wow. Interesting. He was really relying on other stuff. If he doesn't have Rhino Hide or 2 Armor, this is going to be a huge issue for him. Oh, no. Uh, that's unfortunate. Which, you know, it's... To be fair... He might have been thinking, hey, Ritual's the meta right now. We're going long game. I'm only going to play long game things. It's interesting he has a Battle Forge and no two chest piece armor. Yeah, I, it seems a little miscalculated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, he's really taking a lot of time here to plan. He's he's nervous, dude. All right, looks like they're gonna move on to the next thing. Uh, nothing comes out of that battle forge, and it looks like we do have a curse going down. Oh no, it does. Elemental cloak does come out. Okay, so. Um, they're just doing it out of order. So it looks like a curse does go down. A double curse goes down. 
Um, whoa, so this could be, I guess, probably a tar trap. If tar I know, trap would be a really good choice. Yeah, if I know how Jason works. Uh, three damage going through with that ballista. A little bit subpar there, but uh, you know it is fine. That puts him at 19 out of 32. This is a mess. Didn't plan for Cass. Oh no, he spent oh, all that no. time. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, Martyrs would be perfect right now for her. Asking for a reveal if it is a... Um, <clears throat> oh, a Mage Bane. Interesting. Okay, I, I was thinking Nullify, but Mage Bane works as well. And that's just free damage now. Wow. We're yep. going to see Taking some... <laughs> I, like, I like doing that. I like taking the curses in. You know, and mm -hmm. I mean, Mage Bane is probably like just—it's an amazing curse. Like at best, you break even um, right. if it's revealed, right. uh, and usually they're gonna take. I mean, I, I'm sorry, it's not even break even. They take damage regardless. Um, but usually they end up taking at least three or four damage before going. Okay, I need to take care of this before I'm just dead off of it. Uh, Castiel does try to tell the Blizzard to stop. Uh, in a very judgmental tone, but um, <laughs> the ballista doesn't really doesn't really care. It's ballista fine. doesn't listen. Yeah, it's got horns. What a round that was! Holy cow! And the burn does go away. Looks like Jack Smack is going to be going down to nineteen damage. I wonder if he, um, uh, Jason had a fireball ready, but because the elemental cloak came out, chose not to do it. Oh no, he double oh, cursed, didn't he? Yeah, no, he, he didn't even think cursed. about that. Yeah, I, huh. I think he's just relying on his warlock experience here because you totally do that in in a game where you know you've been hit by a fireball, so now you put the elemental cloak on. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to curse you two times this turn, and then next turn I'll explode your cloak, right? Yep. It's just... <laughs> that's that's a solid move. Explode is like one of those double efficient cards. And I do want to point out that Dorseus is going to heal. It may heal. I guess we'll see what happens. Let's get past this finite life. Eh? We're at double speed here. And I, I think the nervousness of a championship match totally gets to people's minds when they're like, oh, man, I'm really messing up right now in terms of, like, I don't have the answers. And that's, like, exactly where you want someone to be when you're in a rush build. Um, right. It's just, like, there is no way I can win. There are no possible ways out of this. Uh, because then they, they're going to shut down and just lose the mental game. Jason's like, hang on. <laughs> oh my. I'm just gonna It's like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> fast forward this really fast. I'm throw, throwing yeah. you off. <laughs> Looks like uh Jack Smack is gonna heal too. And I do wanna point out that uh there is an unholy reversal. Honest priestess. Hey. How did you know that? Because this is Jason's replay. <laughs> All right, I might have You're accidentally. Terrible. I accidentally scrolled my mouse over it, and it just happened to tell me what it was. Um, but it was actually an accident, seriously. But that does mean it does get revealed now. So it's going to be preventing two, dealing three damage. So it's a net five difference for four mana, and that's going to put Jack Smack now. Oh my goodness. Eight damage away. Yeah, that's that's dangerous. <laughs> With a Hawkeye. Jack Spike's looking at 26 mana. And I do want to point out that that mana is actually a big deal. Uh, leather vest coming out. Wow, going with lots of leather. Um, that this mana could have turned into so much more. And that's why it's so important to have contingencies for rushes. And there's the strangle vine going down. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wow. love it. Wow. Did we see how many cards they both had? 
Um, at 40, the beginning. 40 for Jack. I don't. I could look at Jason, but it will reveal his whole deck. Um, okay. If we want to do that, I can. But um, it looks eh. like you don't need that. Five mana gets paid. It is going to be. What is? Are you going to reveal it? I just spelled Cassiel remove curse. Yep. If he ever wants to. You know. Okay. That's fine. What? What he just happened? He's just not using the card, but that's okay. <laughs> you have a card here on Casio. That you just <laughs> use, man. You're seeing what I'm seeing, right? <laughs> yep. I do. That is... That is again that nervousness, man. This is um, it, it honestly like competitive matches are so interesting in terms of like a mental state, and how you know Jack Specs played this game for a long time. He knows all these rules and stuff, and this is just right. him just not able to focus and and get the proper rules done. Even oh, here comes another curse. All right, Dang. so Jason's just like you know what? I'm just gonna lock you down and not rely on RNG now. And I'm sure he has attack spells still, but he's just like, let's just do other ways of attacking you. And asking for a reveal. No reveal happens. Okay. He only has two mana, so. And it looks like Dorsey's going to try to attack um, Jason's mage, which, you know, might as well. There's nothing really better to do there. Um, I... At least it won't be flawless, he says. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, basically, wow. this Ballista is still at full full life, just ready to rain down more hell this round. Um, let's see if Dorsey's is going to heal the Priestess. And he doesn't have to. And there's that remove curse going away off of uh, Cassiel. Yeah. Oh, Cass apparently bugged. Cassiel bugged it out. That's fine. This, this round. And he is going to choose the heal. And there is the Unholy Reversal getting revealed again. So Taking again, three more damage. Net five. Prevents the healing. Three damage for four mana. Uh, man, Jason is just playing this game well. This is just like super impressive. Like I'm reading everything you're doing kind of play. And uh, we do have a Strangle Vine here. That I believe is going to deal. I think it's one damage. Because it's equal to the amount of crush tokens, and it has one right now. Right. Um, I do want to point out that um, if I remember right, it gains life. So with death lockout, it actually won't gain the life because right. it's not no, innate. It, it, it won't gain the life. Mm -hmm. It'll stay at six. Yep. Which is fine. Um, I mean, it dealt a damage, and if it's going to make him use a teleport, I think he's probably going to be okay with that. Hmm. And I, I wonder if Jason actually moved into this zone because if Jack Smack double teleported and tried to have maybe Dorsey's follow, now he's hindered. Or if he just wanted to move in this zone to, you know, beat things up. Yeah, he might have just moved in here to, to do some punching. Because mm -hmm. we do still have that melee one. Yep. Which, I mean, for free, you know, might as well. Jack Smack saying he needs a break. Before his mage breaks. Wow. I haven't even been at this this long. <laughs> That's all right. It happens. You get nervous. Oh, yeah. You get to thinking, and you're like, oh, wait, my body's telling me something. Maybe he's hoping to have a sort of, like, revelation while he's, while he's taking a break here. So uh, he does have another card to plan, but I do want to note that he planned out three cards so far. That might be everything he's actually planning, and he's not sure in that fourth yet. Uh, that being said, he has 33 mana. So, against rushes, and really for like any strategy game, honestly, um, a big problem a lot of people usually run into is I don't have any way of spending my resources because I've been so thrown out of my game. Um, and that's, like, this board looks terrible for Jack, but that's because a lot of his play isn't even on the board because of his mana. Right. Uh, we do have a, a punch from an orc. Coming into the Priestess, uh, it's going to deal zero damage because of the oh. four armor that he has right now. Yep. 
Um, Ballista then's going to hit. Rolling seven. Divine Intervention gets revealed. What? And that's going to prevent the Ballista from dealing damage. Nice. He's going to move into this Deathlock zone. Interesting play. So again, Dorsius is now going to be hindered. So in terms of yeah. more healing, he's now just here. Uh, interesting that the orc chose to go first, but didn't use his quick cast. Um, because now he's kind of stuck here. Uh, we have a <laughs> Leviathan, Leviathan going down. What? <laughs> what? And <laughs> I, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> great play out of that. I love the Leviathan. Uh, Doris is going to walk in, deal six damage as Ballista. Are you kidding me? Holy cow. Leviathan is awesome. Piercing 2-7. You could take out this Deathlock next round. Um, and then we I have a pestilence. Idol of Pestilence going down from Jason. So he didn't even care that he moved. I bet he had an attack spell and the Idol. And he's like, let me see what you do. And I'll play one or the other. So that's why he punched. So hmm. cool. Um, Jack Smack not being able to have any sort of um, healing happening from Dorsius. Uh, Cassio will heal too, most likely. Yeah, he did. He did that. Because um, Cassio did Martyr's Restoration yep, yep, on the Priestess. Didn't, didn't mention that. Yep. Didn't, didn't call that out. But uh, now Cassio is two ticks away from death here. And we have, yeah, because we have the uh, Idol dealing one, uh, healing two from Dorsius. And these two are just going to take one. And I believe the Orc should take a damage as well. Yeah. Uh, so now that Priestess. He went up to five. Priestess is out of range of this Battle Forge. Uh, Leviathan. I would have loved to have seen this earlier. Um, well, it does make sense that he drops it the turn mm -hmm. he goes to the Deathlock, right? I agree with that. Absolutely agree so. with that, yeah. So at least now it's here. Yep, and he's far enough away from the Orc that uh, he's not going to take too much damage this round, probably. Yeah, we are at 24 out of 32. Uh, I wonder right. if he has more yeah. martyrs. Or no, he... Yeah, he might have more martyrs. He might. But he has to heal at first. So, ooh, I don't know. Yeah, the Cassiel is maybe going to heal too this round. Yeah. Leviathan. Yeah. So Leviathan is... and a Priestess. What? <laughs> I mean, it's a good card, man. I, I agree. It's a good card. It's just 10 I, spellbook points. I, I don't think I would take it as a Priestess, but I respect it, man. And Cassiel is going to die before any sort of actions happen. This was a smart play. Um, it does get rid of her move curse, so no sort of mana battering, battery happening. Uh, we do see an enchantment go down onto the Leviathan. Uh, we are going to see a piercing two seven die attack happen. Six of that going through. Uh, there is a we're going to reroll. Ah, Kira's favor does happen. Um, smart play. And oh, it, did, it gets, gets five one damage. Less. That's unfortunate. That's just how it works. Either way, it probably wasn't going to kill it, and it was going to take two hits. But it's always nice to get average at least. Uh, we see something go down in that priestess. Uh, possibly another mage bane. We see uh, Jax Max Mage casting Teleport. On Dorsius. A four die attack uh, against two oh, armor. No nothing. damage. Super unlucky play here from Jax Max. Uh, trying to kill this death life, but just, it, it's just not working. Yeah. Wow. So that gives Jason a sort of nice edge next round. You know, do you have the Leviathan? kill this Deathlock for sure, or do you risk Dorsius attacking it first or something like that? Uh, the Bliss is going to be up and ready. I think he ready. needs to kill it. Yeah, the, the problem is he's got a weather of the Ballista shot and whatever mm -hmm. whatever spells on him and whatever the Orc does. Is he going <laughs> like, to heal? He's... Is he going to heal the Priestess right now? Because there is a card oh, yeah, on him. Of course him. he is. There is a card on him uh, from yeah, Jason. True. And remember, he doesn't have to heal from Dorsius. Let's see if he chooses. This is actually I a, think, a nice I one. think he has to. Risk it? I think, I think he has to risk it. Okay. I mean, he'll net three, or he'll he'll take three damage, so he'll be up to 27, as opposed to 24. Or he'll be down yeah. to 22, so it's... 
It's rough, man. Yeah, I mean, either I way, what I right. like is if that Deathlock was taken out. If it is a uh, unholy reversal, then it would have prevented that healing anyway. He's gonna heal. All right. Let's see if he reveals it. He does reveal oh an unholy gosh. reversal. So even if he Jeez. would have taken out that Deathlock, he wouldn't have healed at all. That's crazy. Wow. But of course, it would have let him, you know, during first quick cast. But um, so that means he's going to go up to 27 and then take in another damage from Idle, putting him four damage away. Dan, it's, it's your Jason's initiative. There is a Ballista with Piercing 3. Jason, or uh, Jack Smack has four armor. Um, but Jason's looking at 12 mana. Is he going to finish oh this with God. a meteor? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> what is going to happen here? <laughs> uh, he's got to do something in the quick cast, I'm sure. Do you have another one? Jason moves a hurl rock. Just show now and I'll concede. He's J oh, Jason, he doesn't have any more. Doesn't have any more unholy reversals. Unholies. That was an interesting thing to say. Uh, but three was all you need, I guess. Yeah, uh, that was that was an interesting Dorseus plan. Just ignore the horse and get extra damage off of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Totally using your own creature against you. And, you know, we were talking earlier how Dorseus is just kind of that creature everyone's taking right now. And um, Jason just kind of showing, hey, I have a counter to this that I think I can play in this sort of like in the pocket of how I need to win if I rush. And uh, super impressive to see that play. All right, here we go. Jason's passing on quick cast. Interesting. I guess he's like, what are you going to do? I guess he could like reverse attack or something like that just to be like, no matter what, I'm making sure this happens. A teleport wow, does go third down. third teleport. During quick cast, putting him at range three. We do see <laughs> the, <My meteor. laughs> the no art hurl meteorite is going to do it. Ten dice rolled. Seven going through. That armor does take full effect, but it's not enough. Jack Smack does die. Healing charm. Regrowth getting revealed on that priestess. <laughs> this he death wanted that lock, death lock. He wanted that death, death lock, lock dead. It should have died. I mean, it was a, it was a good plan. So basically, if that would have died, he would have said, "All right, I take damage from Dorsius, but then I'm going to healing charm and I'm going to get regeneration because Dorsius right. is not regeneration." And, I would and he would gain much... a life off of the healing charm, too. Yep, yep. So, holy cow, man. Not being able to, not killing that Deathlock made the game pretty <laughs> short, yeah. I think. No kidding, Wow. Man. Beautiful play from Jason, man. Seriously, that was so well done. And, um, yeah, so... The, the thing is, though, like... Jack had a chance there. If he had killed the uh, Deathlock, mm -hmm. right? He could have gotten to the point where the meteorite wouldn't have killed him. Yep. He was safe from the Ballista because that teleport. Uh, the idol was still a problem, but he would have had Dorsius and a Leviathan out, whereas Jason had really nothing. A Hawkeye? Yeah. I don't know if, uh, if Jack Smack had more heals in his book. I, I would assume so. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he could have maybe out sustained it and gotten back into the game. So congratulations to Jason. Yep, that was very well played, aggressive book. No right kidding. There. And with that game, he is going to take the championship match, becoming the new Arcane Duels League champion. <laughs> nice yeah well i'm super grateful for everybody who played for everybody who attended these videos watched the game with us mm -hmm. listened in tuned in whatever you want to say uh, i appreciate yeah. everyone that also participated and played seriously yep. i've loved watching all these games and uh for everyone that's following online um any of your comments are just i always love reading comments so 
feel free to leave comments about this game because seriously, there was a lot of cool stuff. Like we've been talking a lot how you know longer game play right now is sort of dominating everything throughout this whole tournament, and we just saw Jason go in with a blood wave and just shut it down. Mm hmm. Super solid. Now it is important to note that he knew he was fighting a priestess. Yes. Okay. Um, and he chose to do this anyway. <laughs> yep. yep. I mean, but he knew that there was going to be some healing going on, so he could pack extra unholy reversals, and he could preempt the death lock and stuff. Um. Yeah. But absolutely, it was just super well thought out for like this specific situation. Is how his build was, which, man, that shows such good play. Well, and uh. Yeah, that was our 10 channel experiment. Yeah. Um, I am really tell curious. Tell us, you guys, what you think about it. Whether you think it was a balancing factor or um, if the mages just say the way they were or something else in between. Yeah, let us know. Seriously. Um, and if you guys have any other comments about current cards, you know, maybe your favorite mages, I don't know, even favorite art, just feel free to leave a comment because I'm. I'm always like uh, watching these comments, man, because uh, I, I like getting feedback on our videos. So, Jason, um, you rock, man. Congratulations. Seriously. He meteors. He, he, you, know, you don't rock. You meteor. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. But it's always and, good casting with you, man. <laughs> yeah. And to everyone who watches this as soon as it goes live, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All that stuff. Yep. This is our last video for 2019, oh, but yeah. we're not going anywhere. Yeah, be on the lookout for uh, some new Arcane Duels announcements, seriously. Um, and I guess we'll just leave it at that. Yep. All right. Sounds good. You guys take Congratulations care. Congratulations to Jason. Well, well fought, Jack Smack. And uh, those of you who haven't watched the other games, we have a bronze match. All the group stage matches, except for one. Missed one. We don't have a replay for that one. <laughs> no. But all the semifinals matches. So this is our, actually, I think this has been our most complete series. Heck, yes. And hopefully we can get one that's completely complete so in just, the future. Yeah, just to also talk about, uh, if you're not a part of the Discord, feel free to, you know, follow the link that is on our channel. Uh, that leads to our Mage Wars Discord. Um, you know, because we're always announcing when we're going to do the next tournaments, things like that. Or if you just like Mage Wars and want to talk about it, the Discord's actually really active. So check that out. Um, everyone that watches, you guys are great. Keep playing some cool Mage Wars. Puddin, you want to give the last words, man? Uh, last words, man. All right. What a tournament.